it's all been about this it's all been about gearing towards this and those races have been part of the plan So in London last year for Mo Farah, it was all about the support of the home crowd and it was about the quest to win Olympic gold. This is about some unfinished business. This is about payback for a gold medal that slipped away in 2011. An intriguing race. We've already been talking, of course, I don't know so many times already today what might happen, what could happen, who could do what, who should do what. How do they beat Mo Farah? Well, now they've got to do something about it. They've got to get out there and give us, I hope, Brendan, a really good 10,000 metre championship final that we can remember and with the right result at the end from our point of view. Well, it's a bit quicker, isn't it? But it's still a sort of pace which uh, is fairly comfortable. And one thing that Alberto did say to me, Brendan, is I said, what would happen? I said, just think, you know, what if somebody went off really, really hard? And he said, well, Galen and Mo, he said, Galen and Mo will run six or seven seconds behind and work their way back. But this isn't really hard. This is just a comfortable pace still. It was really a question of what if somebody decided to make this a 26.50 race, a 26.45 race right from the beginning? And I think they're so confident, these guys, that they can finish better than anyone, that they can run the second half of the race. They won't be too stressed about letting things go a little bit and just hanging off. And he said, we can work together, and these guys will chat with each other, Ritzenheim's there as well. And if they ever get to a point where they feel as though they need to work to get back to this group, then they can do it. But they're stretched out, which is good to see. Kip Kamoy having his turn at the front, Tanui behind him, then Kuma, then Merger, then Gebri Meskel, and uh, Kifle and then Jayla. Well, if you look at the Moe's behavior in the race, he did encourage them to go along. That was clever. He's running with his teammates. Galen Rupp just ahead of him. Dathan Ritzenheim just behind him. And those three guys trained together in Oregon on an almost daily basis. So they've been in this position many times. They know exactly what they're doing. And if there is a team race being run in this race, it's like you said earlier, Steve, it's those three. It's the American, the American based Britain, Mo Farah, and the two American athletes, Dathan Ritzenheim and Galen Rupp. Galen Rupp, silver medalist in the Olympic Games last year. Mo Farah, the double champion. And I, do, I do love saying that, actually. Dathan Rittenheim just behind him. And the pace just continuing, just to be steady, be regular. If there's, there's no real serious tactics emerging, but you wouldn't expect it yet. There's 15 laps to go. Well, this is the point, isn't it, of no return? This is the point at which somebody has got to be brave. Somebody has got to grab this race by the scruff of the neck. When they run down the back straight, they'll reach the 3,000 meter to go mark. And that, as all of these athletes know, 3K to go, once you're inside the last 3K, you keep running 67s and 66s, then you're just asking for one thing and one thing only. So Tanui has had to do a lot of the work himself. No one's been that interested. 248 again after a two well last two kilometer splits have been 248 nothing changing into the last 3,000 meters far where he wants to be and the closer we get to three four laps to go the closer he gets to the front and he'll not want to give up the position you'll see Rupp get closer to him you'll see them try and control this will the Kenyans will the Ethiopians try and rough him up a little bit as you see Machiri just for the first time, get a little bit closer. The Kenyan just moving into fifth place. So it's Tanui, Kuma, Farah, Merga, Machiri just getting a little nudge from Jaylan. Galen Rupp moving into that group. Mayako of Uganda just on the inside. And then Kajuga in the yellow vest of Rwanda just ahead of Galen Rupp. And Dathan Ritzenheim moves up for the first time of the USA. Just stretching Machiri. You could tell you wanted to go, Bren, and this is the first time anybody else outside of Tanui and Kuma has really gone to the front and Rupp realizes this might be it this might be when the race is changing Mo Farah realizes it and now they're just being stretched a little bit but it's still nothing Brent still no real pace here I'll tell you what though Galen Rupp's running cleverly there he's on the shoulder of Mo Farah so if you want to go past those two you've got to go wide outside you've got to run a little bit further he now knows into the finishing straight Machiri and Kuma and then Galen Rupp, first and second in the Olympic Games here. And they're being tracked by Merger. And that's an interesting position. 
And just behind Merger is the reigning champion. But 65, he'll thank them for that. He's not going to be too bothered yet. They're not testing him yet. Six laps to go in the men's 10,000 metres. Mo Farah, our favourite, our hope. Well, honestly, Mo Farah couldn't have wished for a better opening up here. To get the five laps to go in the kind of form he's in, with the kind of speed he's got, at this le level of performance, which is not exceptionally hard, it's not been brutal in any sense, and we've seen many of those kinds of races in the World Championships in the past, so Mo will be thankful. The first half of the equation is in his favour. Gabri Meskel hasn't done anything yet, and is he in the in the position or is he fading off the pace and there goes Mo Farah this is this is smart this is tactical this is clever and when Mo comes into the finishing straight he'll see the sign and it'll say four laps to go and it'll say that Kuma and Murga and his teammate Rupp and Tanui now as they come down it's almost like a mile race with a good hard steady warm-up but I think Gabri Meskel the athlete who was favoured, the athlete who was running up in the Olympic Games, is going out the back door here, and they've got four laps to go. Gabriel Meskel didn't respond, and as Brendan was saying, he's right at the back of that group, and uh, he doesn't look like he's got anything to offer. I'm not sure Jay has got too much, but he's still in there. And uh, this could be a demonstration. This could absolutely be a show from Mo. Two to go, where he wants to be, in the front. He's got Kumar there for company, he's got Tanui, he's got Rupp who didn't get on the shoulder. Rupp's meant to get on his shoulder to protect him, to make them run wide, he couldn't do it. Machiri is there, Jaylan, the big danger, the defending champion, also there. Now, Mo Farah, 600 to go is what he likes to go, he's looking for Rupp, he's looking for his training partner, he's looking for his pal, he wants him on his shoulder, he's his wingman, he's his lieutenant, and he wants him there, and he's got him there with 600 to go. He doesn't need to think about anybody else now, he's got to concentrate on his own running, he is being joined by his training partner Galen Rupp, but Mo, the silver medalist from 2011, the Olympic champion at 10,000 metres, Tanui moving on the inside, Mo's got to be aware of it, he's got to be aware, and he was aware of that move, now he's in the position, come on Mo, we've seen you do it all year, we've seen you sprint on the last lap, now let's see what you can do today, be careful of the lap runners, that's the other message from Mo Farah, the bell sounds, 26-27, and Mo's got to graph every inch of this last lap, there are some challenges coming to him, he's strong enough, he's fast Fast enough and he's on the way he's strolling down the back straight he's got to kick again he's got two more opportunities down the back straight on the top end Tanui with him now Mo Farah let's show the speed today that you've shown us all season and here comes Jaylan the defending champion Farah in the front Jaylan who won it last time who beat him in the home straight on his shoulder Tanui of Kenya is there Farah's kicking hard and Jaylan is still there the threat hasn't gone Mo Farah digging deep, he's got Jaylan right there, and here's the last bit of acceleration, and Mo Farah starts to go away, it's still not one, Jaylan is still there, and Jaylan comes again, but Farah's going to get there, this is world domination for Farah, he is the world champion, gold once more, it was hard, it was tough, it was meant to be easy and it wasn't, it was meant to be a smooth last lap where he turned on the burners and he did it, but they were all still there. Mo Farah, his third global gold medal. He's done it, he's done it. And goodness me though, he gave us a few anxious moments on that last lap. When Jaylan loomed, you suddenly thought, this guy has the pace, we know he's got the pace, we know he's outkicked Farah in the past, and just for a moment, but he timed it well, he'd saved just enough. He didn't quite have Rupp there with him, did he, to help him out, he had to do it all himself this time, and he stood the test. And you know, Brent, when you're a champion as he is, a double Olympic champion, and the expectation is there, and the pressure is there, it's so easy to think all I've got to do is just go out there and do it. But even though we were saying they weren't hurting him, they hurt him on the last lap and he had to dig deep there.